Hello, dear friends. Today, we'll talk about the keto diet from an evidence-based medicine perspective. First, I'll tell you what processes occur in the body during the keto diet and why they can be beneficial. Then I'll talk about the results of clinical studies regarding the benefits and dangers of the keto diet and share my experience. In conclusion, I will give recommendations on when it is appropriate to use it and how not to harm yourself. The name keto diet comes from the word ketones. Ketones are produced by the liver. They are present in the blood of an ordinary healthy person in small quantities and increase with starvation, diabetes, and lack of carbohydrates in the diet. The amount of ketones in the blood increases when the body shifts to energy supply from fat instead of carbohydrates. The keto diet has been known since the beginning of the last century. When there was no insulin, it was the only way of life for diabetic patients. It was also found that increasing the level of ketones in the blood reduced the frequency of seizures in children with epilepsy. The current attention to the keto diet is because many miraculous properties are attributed to it. These include rapid weight loss, controlling blood sugar, lowering insulin levels, reducing inflammation, slowing aging, improving brain function, fighting cancer, and many other benefits. The keto diet also appeals to athletes. When glycogen stores are limited, fat becomes an endless fuel supply when cycling or doing triathlons. On a keto diet, more than 70% of energy comes from fat, 20% from protein, and 5 to 10% from carbohydrates. On average, up to 50 grams of carbohydrates are allowed. This amount of carbohydrates is contained, for example, in 360 grams of apples. It is allowed to eat without restrictions meat, fish, eggs, bacon, butter, fatty cottage cheese, vegetable oil, avocado, and nuts, except cashews and peanuts. All cereals, flour products, confectionery, sugar, honey, dried fruits, vegetables containing starch, and legumes are forbidden. You can only eat green leafy vegetables in unlimited quantities and some colored vegetables. There is also a variant of the vegetarian keto diet. So how does the keto diet work? Our body mainly uses carbohydrates, which come from food, for energy needs. When carbohydrates are scarce, our body switches to another fuel, fats, similar to converting a car from gasoline to gas. Our body's carbohydrate stores are small, with only 300 to 700 grams of glycogen, depending on the individual. At the same time, the average healthy person has about 20 kilograms of fat distributed under the skin, in the omentum, and around the internal organs. Overweight people have even more fat. One can live on this fat reserve for weeks and sometimes months. When glycogen stores are depleted and blood glucose levels decrease, a chain of reactions is triggered that activate enzymes that break down triglycerides in fat tissue. Triglycerides are broken down into free fatty acids and glycerol. Free fatty acids are transported to the liver. Fatty acids are oxidized in liver cells. An oxidation of fatty acids leads to the formation of a substance known as acetylcoenzyme A. Acetylcoenzyme A enters the Krebs cycle where it is bound to oxaloacetate. The Krebs cycle produces ATP, adenosine triphosphoric acid, the cell's primary energy source. If the body receives little carbohydrate, the availability of oxaloacetate is reduced and the products of fatty acid oxidation are directed along another path. Acetylcoenzyme A is converted into acetoacetic acid and beta-oxybutyric acid, in other words, into ketones. If the average concentration of ketones in human blood is only 0.003 to 0.6 millimoles per liter, then when starving, their content can reach 16 to 20 millimoles per liter. The starving person may even smell acetone. At first, the body tissues are not adapted to the nutrition with ketones. However, with time, they successfully reorganize their metabolism and begin to break down acetoacetic acid with further involvement of its derivatives in the Krebs cycle. Thus, for example, the brain, initially fed only on glucose, 
develops the ability to meet its energy needs by 75% at the expense of ketones. The kidneys and heart already prefer to feed on ketones. Usually, when fasting, the body switches to ketone feeding after 72 hours. As it adapts, the acetone odor from the person disappears as well. Glucose levels on a ketogenic diet do not drop critically due to the secretion of the hormone glucagon, a hormone that is an insulin antagonist. Our body has a pathway that involves getting glucose from non-carbohydrate foods. This process is called gluconeogenesis. Since the keto diet lowers insulin levels, it has positive effects regarding hunger reduction, fat reduction, and aging. On a keto diet, the body adapts to using fat as energy. It is particularly significant at the beginning of weight loss. In some people who restrict calorie intake but do not reduce carbohydrate intake sufficiently, paradoxically, muscle begins to melt instead of fat. It is because in the presence of carbohydrates, it is easier for the body to restructure itself to devour protein than fat, resulting in weight loss, but the thickness of the fat remains the same, burning muscle. If you exclude carbohydrates, the body will have to switch to fat. Another effect of the ketogenic diet is that energy is spent on the breakdown of fat. It leads to the fact that at the same caloric content of the diet, a person will lose weight faster on a ketogenic diet than on a diet high in carbohydrates. High fat intake, ketone production, and low insulin levels help to decrease appetite. As a result, people lose weight quite effortlessly. It is worth noting that, generally speaking, the weight loss is not because the diet is high in fats. It's all about reducing the calorie content of the diet. Therefore, on a keto diet, you should also count the calories in the products to avoid getting the opposite effect. Proponents of the keto diet believe that high fat consumption and low carbohydrate intake improve the blood lipid spectrum by increasing the fraction of good cholesterol and high density lipoproteins. High density lipoproteins serve as a defense against plaque formation in blood vessels. Another of the trump cards of keto diet supporters is its effect on cancer cells. Glucose metabolism is impaired in cancer cells, and tumor cells actively take up and break down glucose through glycolysis. It is called the Warburg effect. At the same time, if only ketones are left in the blood, cancer cells cannot metabolize them and die. Some researchers believe ketones are good nutrition for the brain, as they help normalize mental functioning and mood, and can even improve the course of Alzheimer's disease. There is evidence that the keto diet helps reduce the intensity of inflammatory processes in the body, which is very good for age-related prevention. All this is certainly good, but do we have proof that all these effects really work? And are these eating habits so safe? Some points of the keto diet are hard to dispute. It's really highly efficient in losing weight quickly and adapting the body to eating fats. I will note that rapid weight loss at the beginning is due to the elimination of carbohydrates. One gram of carbohydrates binds three grams of water, so the body loses water at first. Also, the benefits are undeniable in regard to treating epilepsy in children. However, evolutionally, our bodies are adapted to a diet where energy needs are covered 50 to 55% from carbohydrates. One significant observation showed that mortality was higher among those who followed both high carbohydrate and low carbohydrate diets. At 50 to 55%, the risk was minimal. The same study showed that protein and fats from animal foods were associated with higher mortality than those from plant foods. Regarding insulin control, there is varying evidence ranging from positive effects to decreased insulin sensitivity and even the development of prediabetes. Research results regarding the keto diet, cardiovascular disease risk, and blood lipid profile are mixed. Some of the studies have shown improvement, and some, on the contrary, deterioration and even the development of liver obesity. There is also the issue of eating quality fats on the keto diet. It is not available to everyone. In addition, it is extremely complicated to follow all the keto diet rules. After all, it allows a limited set of products. I tried the keto diet for one month. 
It was difficult for me mentally because I had to eat many things I had considered unhealthy all my life. It didn't bring me any particular gains in physical health. Before starting the keto diet and at the end of it, I had blood tests for lipid profile. The low-density lipoprotein level increased from 2.29 to 2.69 millimoles per liter, and the high-density lipoprotein level was almost unchanged, from 2.51 to 2.49 millimoles per liter. Overall, total cholesterol went from 4.92 to 5.42 millimoles per liter. I should say that I was physically exercising a lot the whole time. After that, I stopped the keto diet and never went back to it. The one thing I've taken from the keto diet that I stick to is the last meal. It should contain as few carbs as possible. The less carbs, the less insulin will be released. Insulin levels affect the synthesis of cholesterol. Just at night, this process is very active. Therefore, by lowering insulin at night, we reduce the production of cholesterol. So, there are currently only two proven reasons to use the keto diet. The first is rapid weight loss, and the second is the control of epileptic seizures. The keto diet should only be used for a short period of time. I won't say exactly, as research is needed, but for one to two months, nothing terrible, of course, will not happen to you. A long-term keto diet has no advantages over other calorie-restricted diets for weight loss. Before you start a keto diet, you should be aware that this diet has contraindications for people with pancreatitis, liver and kidney disease, disorders of fat metabolism, carnitine deficiency, and violation of the synthesis of some enzymes. Therefore, it is better to consult a doctor. Thank you for your time. I wish you good health. See you later. Always there for you. Dr. PopMed.